Hey guys, welcome to Living Seeds Live. Um, this is day, it's still day hot full of the lockdown, um, but welcome, welcome to Living Seeds Live. I'm just going to, um, just going to have a chat for a couple of minutes um, while we get a whole lot of people um, logging on to to look at Living Seeds Live, and I really appreciate every single person. Okay, cool. So, um, just some housekeeping quickly. Uh, today is Friday, the 15th of May. Um, we will be closing our office today at 12 o'clock. Um, we've got a whole lot of, of staff. Um, sorry, so our internet connection is making a noise. Um, we've got a whole lot of staff that have been working exceptionally hard um, to get your orders out. And both Nicola and myself can see that the staff are taking strain. Um, and it's a case of we've just said to the staff, that's it, today, 12 o'clock, they're closing the office, they're going home early, they, they're going to get a little bit of an extended weekend. And I think every single person um, in our offices has really really earned um, more than just half a day off so um, if you do speak to somebody in the office this morning please just give them a shout just tell them that you really appreciate what they're doing um, the guys are working really hard uh, they're coming in uh, most of the guys are here at seven o'clock in the in, in the morning um, they're leaving um, five half past five six o'clock at night but I talk louder. Yes. Um, um, people saying I'm people not talking saying loud enough. Sound is very soft. Okay, so I'll talk louder. So yeah, so it's that better, Emil. <laughs> yeah, Emil, if it's better, just give us a thumbs up so we know that um, that it is better. But yeah, so if you speak to the ladies in the office, please just give them a a little bit of a thank you, um, and let them know that you appreciate the work that they are doing. Okay. Then the next thing is if you. Are watching this either live or if you're watching it um, pre-recorded do us a favor there's a button at the bottom please share the video I'm, I'm a hundred percent sure that um, all of the friends that you haven't actually spoken to during lockdown a lot of them are, are gardening or, or learning to garden or wanting to learn to garden and they have a whole lot of questions that um, that they need answered so they will really benefit if you actually share this video for them looks like we're doing a little bit of maneuvering oh moving it closer sound check to see if we sound work. check Emil is that any better maybe it's because I'm not talking loud enough for to get all the way down to Cape Town okay yeah Sandy says put the camera closer for better sound the camera's closer Sandy we can't go much closer than this <laughs> no, that's as close as we can get now. So. Yeah, no, we can't get much closer than that. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be um, having a, a close-up view of my teeth. Okay, cool. Then, um, for the new guys um, on Living Seeds, uh, you're on Living Seeds Veggie Gardeners. Um, it is, well, we know it is the best vegetable gardening group in South Africa. Um, but we also have a YouTube channel. So if you search for Living Seeds Farm on YouTube, um, you'll be able to find our YouTube channel. There's a lot of really cool videos on there. We teach you a couple of things um, that are generally not found. We have an Instagram account. Um, both our Twitter account and Instagram account is living underscore seeds. I'll repeat that for you. Instagram and Twitter, living underscore seeds. Cool. So I think that's the housekeeping done for today. And um, today's live stream is is specifically about a couple of things we're going to keep this as close to an hour as possible um we've been running to like an hour and 20 minutes an hour and 45 minutes and i'd really like to keep this live stream to an hour so that you know that you can log on at a certain time and one hour later we are done so we're talking about crisis gardening and south africa or the world is currently in a crisis um and the different people are experiencing this crisis in different ways um, we are supremely blessed to be living on a farm we've got space we can walk um, and we have things to do on the farm 
Living Seeds is operating at full steam. So um, we haven't really experienced the lockdown bar the inconvenience. But there are a lot of people out there that are really, really taking serious strain in this lockdown. And um, how do you garden in a crisis? What do you do in a crisis? And we're seeing a lot of, of orders coming through on our website. And um, if people are ordering the incorrect seed for the season, we're seeing a lot of people on our Facebook group that are planting the incorrect seed for the season. And it's, it's, it really is a, um, I'm not too sure what's happening over there. I'm just trying to check that your volume is allowed as, as it should be on your okay. phone. I don't know, because they're still saying they can't hear. So some people are saying the audio is fine. Some are saying it's not. So maybe, okay. maybe yeah, it's... Guys, okay, so some people are saying the audio is fine. Some people are saying the audio is not. What you might want to do is just check your, um, either your phone... Um, volume setting or if you if you listening on your laptop your laptop volume settings um, I can't talk any louder we can't move the camera any closer yeah, everybody's complaining they can't see the banner anymore but otherwise <laughs> no, but they can't hear okay we've got a cool banner so what we'll do is we'll actually pull back right at the end and show you what our banner looks like and um, those of you that have seen us at, at, at garden shows have seen this banner before but anyway so I'm talking about crisis gardening so um, what we're finding is people are planting the incorrect seed now and we see a lot of people that are planting things like squashes they're planting tomatoes they're planting cucumbers um, and they're looking for the nice tasting fruits um, and I can understand why they're looking to do that um, because it's it's a comfort food naturally however gardening revolves around seasons so we are now right at the end of autumn we're about to go into winter uh, so you need to be looking at planting the vegetables that are suited for this time of the year that there's only a very um, small section of the country that can be planting tomatoes and squashes now that is northern KwaZulu Natal and uh, far eastern Mpumalanga um, right on the border of Swaziland those areas um, where you can be planting warmer crops now but otherwise you're looking at planting winter crops so your winter crops are all of your root vegetables your carrots your beetroot your um turnips your swedes etc that is what you should be planting now you're looking at planting your leaf crops so um your brassicas like your your cabbages your broccolis your brussels sprouts your cauliflowers the kales the mustards um, all of those crops should be planted now um, you're looking at planting um, lettuce does exceptionally well in winter lettuce actually prefers a, a cooler growing season than a warmer growing season you're looking at planting peas broad beans um, for those of you I know the broad beans are currently out of stock on our website um, as soon as I'm done with this video we have a supply we only have 20 kilos of broad beans available I'll be picking the broad beans up this afternoon and the broad beans should be available on the website by this evening um, so yeah so you're looking at planting peas now you're looking at planting broad beans um, and those are the crops that you are looking at planting now um, Swiss chard spinach so spinach and Swiss chard are two different things in South Africa um, we've had a long-standing habit of calling Swiss chard spinach um, whereas Swiss chard is Swiss chard and spinach is a totally different crop so that is what you should be planting now and um, the question is should i plant everything and the answer is no you shouldn't plant everything you should be planting what your family eats end of story if your family does not like swiss chard why are you wasting time and space planting swiss chard uh, it just doesn't make sense um, if you don't have the space to plant root crops like like carrots carrots take up a, a, a fair amount of space yes they grow underground but if you if you're planting a whole lot of carrots you need a fair amount of space for carrots you can plant a small crop of carrots what we're doing in our um in our show garden is we're planting carrots between the cabbages um and it's the first time we're actually doing it so we'll see how it goes because they have two different fertilizer requirements um so it's a case of i want you to look at what you are planting 
where you are planting it and how you are planting it. So plant what your family eats. Let's just use the Swiss chart as an example. Your family, let's say you have the average family with a, a two, two and a half kids. Um, you're looking at approximately 10 Swiss chard plants to feed your family um, about twice a week. If you want to feed your family more than twice a week on the Swiss chard plants, you're going to need to up the number of Swiss chard plants. So you're looking at about 20 plants. Um, those 20 plants, you can harvest those 20 plants um, twice a week. Uh, I very often see people um, harvesting the Swiss chard and what they're doing is they have this beautiful Swiss chard plant and they whittle the Swiss chard plant all the way down to two or three little leaves sticking out the top and the rest of the plant is bare. And the minute you do that, you actually put the plant into shock. And what happens there is that it takes a lot longer for that plant to start producing again. Whereas if you leave a minimum of six leaves, and I'm not talking six small leaves like this, I'm talking six well-formed leaves. If you leave a minimum of six leaves on that Swiss chard plant, what happens is the, the Swiss chard plant has the leaves, those leaves produce energy and food for the plant. And it allows the plant to produce more leaves faster. So don't over harvest your plants. The minute you start over harvesting your plants, what happens is you set the plants back and the plants need to recover from the setback before they can start producing again. And that is critically important. So look at how you're harvesting your perennial crops like your Swiss chard or, or spinach, um, even your mustards and, and um, loose leaf lettuces, um, loose leaf uh, cabbages like the tronchudo or the kales. Don't hammer the plants back too hard. Rather plant a couple of extra plants and um, always leave at least six, six leaves. We like to leave between six and eight leaves per plant, but six or eight well-formed leaves. So um, that is one piece of advice that will actually help, help you um, harvest more of your plants on a regular basis. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Living on a Farm. Okay, our apologies. What? It's going to keep dropping. I think we're going to have to call it a day um, and apologize okay. most profusely. We'll try. Let's try. If it does the whole reconnect thing again, we're going to have to. Is it on? It's on now. Are we on? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, we seem to have a bit of a, um, a connection issue. I'm not 100% sure why. I know that um, uh, our Vodacom Tower, which is literally line of sight of us, has been giving us uphill. Um, for the last two or three weeks um, and but yeah anyway okay so back to crisis gardening um, I was talking about fertilizer and fertilizing your cut and come again plants um, I'm gonna try and run through this as quick as possible um, hopefully the connection um, holds so I, I do apologize guys um, okay so um, I was talking about fertilizing your, your your cut and come again plants and it's critically important that you fertilize your plants if you're looking to get a harvest over winter um, and especially in a time now where harvesting food is actually of critical importance you need to fertilize your plants if you're not going to fertilize your plants you're going to get lackluster performance and no, nobody really wants lackluster performance especially when they're putting time and effort and their money into a vegetable garden um, I, I did mention this last week but I'll mention it again today um, the fertilizers that you should be looking at right now is the Telborn Organics Vita Green. Um, the Vita Green is for the, the green leaves. Anything that you want nice green leaves, Telborn Organics Vita Green. So it's, it's all of your leaf crops, your cabbages, etc. Broccolis, Brussels sprouts, cauliflowers. Um, that's Vita Green. Do not use Vita Green on a root crop. If you use a high nitrogen fertilizer like Vita Green on a root crop, you're going to get these beautiful tops of your carrots and very often we see on our living seeds veggie gardener page where people say i have these beautiful carrots and the minute i lift them i have this puny little carrot at the bottom and that's because you've given the carrot the wrong fertilizer so you've given the carrot a fertilizer to produce nice green leaves which is exactly what it's done but it hasn't produced a nice root so for the uh, for for root crops you want uh, the vita grow which is in the yellow bag. Uh, that's a two feet two fertilizer and that helps root, root crops 
establish nice roots. Um, so yeah, just remember that when you um, are um, are fertilizing your plants, or actually ordering or buying fertilizer somewhere. So um, yeah, I think that is basically um, one of the one of the aspects of crisis gardening is or a number of aspects. Plant what your family eats. Plant enough. Don't over harvest, especially cut and come again plants. If you if you look after them, and um, they're going to last you a long time, and they'll actually run you all the way through into spring and summer. Um, with crisis gardening in South Africa at this specific time, um, we're on lockdown level um, what 3.9 something. Um, apparently, we're going down to level three in certain parts of the country by the end of the month. But if you look at the news as what as, as, as to what's happening in the next um, two to three months they're talking about the the coronavirus peaking in South Africa around September and that means that yes we're going down to level three now but we quite possibly could go back up to level four or level five in September October I, I don't know how long it's going to take um, it depends on how much you believe um, in in our government's ability to um, look after us. Um, but yeah, so we are going to need to plan our garden, not just for now, not just for this week. We're going to be looking at planning and planting vegetables for the foreseeable future. So you need to make plans and understand what's happening in your vegetable garden all the way through until December at least and this takes some long-term planning and there is a lot of noise around here we're actually inside our tunnel um, one of our seedling tunnels so if you do hear a rustling in the background that is our tunnels so um, the crisis gardening look at planting things that will last you a long time and I would seriously look at spending um, a lot of effort in growing Swiss chard in growing spinach in growing um, a whole lot of leaf crops like the kales like the mustards especially if you like uh, the mustard flavors um, because those crops are cut and come again crops you plant them once and you can harvest over an extended period of months and that is critically important um, crops like peas um, peas require a fair amount of space um, especially if you want to harvest a lot of peas off them um, so if you've got the space plant peas if you haven't got the space rather look at planting peas in in a container garden to have as a snack um, while you're gardening or, or to put inside your salads or something like that but um, you need a fair amount of peas to actually make a substantial meal so yeah look at that look at what's happening sit down read the news reports about what's happening where the predictions are with the coronavirus in South Africa over the next couple of months because that is what you need to plan for it's not planning for right now you need to sit down and actually work out what's going to happen um, I'm, I'm not going to make predictions um, but I think um, we are in for some tough times um, especially people that are losing their jobs or on short pay um, you're going to need to find ways to uh, uh, to augment um, cheap or free food for your family cool next thing and this is something that we're seeing quite a bit on um, on living seeds veggie gardeners is, is growing from scraps um, and uh, there's been a couple of posts of people planting potato peels um, and and they've had a harvest of potatoes and yes it does work um, we've seen posts of people um, planting their carrot tops to grow carrots yes it does work um, I've seen posts where people have have taken the bottom of a Chinese Mishihili cabbage and put it into a vase of water and the center of the cabbage has grown out and those are all fantastic and it works without a doubt it works um, we do have a couple of concerns and one of the concerns is that very often vegetables will come with a, a disease or a virus and you've heard me banging on about this a number of times um, you'll buy a vegetable in a store and the vegetable in the store is perfectly healthy to eat there's nothing wrong with the with the vegetable however inside the vegetable there will be a virus or a disease um, and very often 
and this is something that you can actually do right now is you can go into your into your local vegetable store and pick up a cabbage and if you take the cabbage and you flip it over so you can see where the stem is if you see a dark ring at the bottom of the cabbage on the stem okay that is a viral disease inside the cabbage and the cabbage is 100 percent perfect there's nothing wrong you can eat the cabbage but if you if you take that cabbage and you grow it out or regrow it what happens is an aphid comes along lands on that cabbage sucks up some sap and it sucks up the virus in the cabbage and it flies on and it moves over your your other cabbage plants what's happening there is you actually literally transmitting a virus that you did not have in your garden to all of your cabbages in your garden and it's a cabbage stunting virus um, it causes your cabbage to, to stunt it's prevalent through most of south africa um, and that's just one example another example is there are multiple potato diseases and a lot of potatoes that are sold in the stores very often have a one of a number of diseases actually in the potato and that's something that you as a consumer won't won't know it's not going to harm you at all but if you take um, a potato from the store or or some peelings of a potato planted in your garden you might be lucky a lot of people are lucky every single year um, and a lot of people are unlucky and we see it on a regular basis on our website where or on our facebook page where people have planted um, some potatoes and what's happened is they've now picked up a disease generally potato diseases will run through potatoes tomatoes um, your pepper plants uh, it'll affect all of the solanaceous vegetables so yes growing from scraps is fantastic is it the smart thing to do <laughs> i don't know that's a it's a decision that you need to take okay so um we're going to be moving along now i see it's half past 10 um and i'm just going to go and try and find the feed for this video on um on my laptop so the next thing that we're going to be talking about is soil protection your winter soil protection is, is critically important for a number of reasons um, generally what happens is your winter soil protection uh, let me just play there okay so generally what happens is your winter soil protection or your winter vegetable garden is a lot smaller than your summer vegetable garden so what you find is that you have a lot of open beds that are lying fallow and there might be a couple of weeds growing inside um, that vegetable garden and what the weeds are doing is it's nature's way of protecting the soil so nature literally abhors a vacuum if it's bare soil nature wants to put something onto that bare soil and that is typically weeds they are your pioneer plants and those weeds will normally cover the soil what the weeds do is they they do a whole variety of things and that's a actually a discussion all by itself um, but it helps to protect the soil surface it helps to keep the ecology inside the soil alive um, if you have bare soil that it, 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 it's totally bare what happens is that top layer of soil that contains all of the life gets desiccated it dries out the pokas inside the soil die and that becomes an issue so what we highly recommend is that you put some kind of mulch on top of your soil and we will talk about mulching every single time because mulching is critically important to your soil and um, those of you that watched the farm tour um, video when we walked all the way down to our garlic fields we showed you um, some straw mulch that we put down and the minute that you flip the straw mulch you'll see that the straw is actually wet and that is the soil underneath the mulch that is it's damp um, I showed somebody um, in our show garden yesterday um, where we haven't had rain for I think three weeks now in Living Seeds Farm and we flipped some straw and the soil was still wet three weeks ago and that is critically important is that the mulch protects the soil it protects the soil moisture it protects the organisms inside the soil and what happens is those organisms will move up 
in your soil strata and they will start to break down the mulch that is covering the soil the minute they start breaking down the mulch they turn that mulch into humus the humus releases a whole variety of things it releases humic acid it, it, it releases a, a, a carbonic acid um, and those acids help to break down um, minerals and elements inside your soil um, that in turn feed your plant so um, your winter soil protection is critically important and you can do this by putting a mulch down if you don't know where to get mulch um, drive to your nearest agri store drive to your nearest co-op and go and buy a couple of straw bales um, and, and take the straw bale. Um, what else with soil protection okay so soil protection um, you can plant green manures we're a little bit late in the season now and it's one of the things that we miss normally every single year we actually put a newsletter out um, just before um, autumn starts and we, and we say to you guys these are the green manures that you need to be planting now um, with the whole coronavirus issue um, our offices were swamped we just didn't have time to send a newsletter out and frankly we didn't want to send a newsletter out um, because we were concerned that it would actually produce more orders and our staff wouldn't be able to handle it so um, yeah there are a number of green manures that you can plant um, we normally sell ceredella, we sell vetch, we sell black oats um, and a number of clovers um, and you'll see in spring we're going to be supplying um, buckwheat as a green manure as well as sun hemp as a green manure as well so we've got those things prepared for you in spring but right now what I would look at doing is I'd look at putting down um, some straw that's the most important thing what you can also do is um, you can actually put a layer of cardboard down directly on the soil and then put the straw on top of that and that'll destroy any grass that's growing inside your vegetable garden as well and that's also another very very nice way just as a sidetrack over here if you have a piece of, of lawn that you want to turn into a vegetable garden go to your local supermarket go and load up on a whole lot of cardboard boxes rip all of the of the plastic tape off the off the cardboard boxes put the cardboard boxes down two layers thick put either compost or straw directly on top of that and you can literally plant directly into that and you have an instant vegetable garden cool okay so the last thing um, we are now we've got about 20 minutes to go um, if you are looking at the newest live feed over here if there are any questions that you guys have I will answer the questions for you um, if you if you just type the questions up so there's a couple of things is there something that you'd like um, one of these living seeds live sessions to cover um, is there a growing technique that you're looking at um, I don't know all of the growing techniques but um, either we can um, we can get an expert in to actually teach you about the technique um, and we can live stream with uh, with experts elsewhere in the country or if there's a techniques that you'd like um, us to share then just um, let us know in the comments okay and what we'll do is we'll actually do a poll on the website as well or on, on, on living seeds veggie gardens we'll, we'll set up a poll to um, for you to answer those questions okay so um, the last thing I want to discuss is a pending seed shortage and um, this is something that I, um, I, I'm very, I, I'm very, con um, let me put it, the, let me put it this way. I don't want to seem like I'm panicking. Um, and Living Seeds is not panicking. We've done a lot of work to ensure um, that we, that we don't run out of seed. Um, there are, there will potentially be a seed shortage. And I'm, let me explain to you why. Globally, um, the the vegetable gardening um, globally vegetable gardeners have increased phenomenally okay for a number of reasons people are stuck at home uh, so they've got nothing to do so they want to vegetable garden um, people have lost their jobs so they need a, a, a way to feed their families so they vegetable garden um, People are understanding that this crisis might not last or it, it might last a lot longer than everybody is hoping for so they are vegetable gardening as um, 
as a form of security. So the the um, the seed sales globally, and I've spoken to a seed company owners locally and overseas, um, and you're looking at upwards of a 400% increase in seed sales, and that is phenomenal. And it's really exciting to see so many people that are food gardening, and it is it, it, it really is fantastic. The problem that you have is that the seed production market is always a year behind. Okay. And what happens is nobody planned for a 400% increase in seed sales. Um, I can't see there being an immediate shortage in, in seeds in the next couple of months. But I have a, a distinct feeling that we are going to see a seed shortage in the next year. Um, and um, it's going to take us an additional year after that to actually catch up and grow the seed. Um, what's happening is a lot of people are buying seed, they're planting seed at the wrong time of the year and they're just learning to plant seeds. If you talk to the seedling suppliers, every single seedling supplier is sold out. Um, the seedling suppliers, the, the commercial seedling suppliers that we've spoken to, um, they are booked out until the end of June, July. Um, so yeah, guys, um, I, would, I would seriously look at ensuring that the seed that you plant um, is well looked after, that your gardens are well looked after. Rather take the time every 15 minutes a day just to walk through your garden, weed your garden. Um, whatever you do, don't panic buy seeds. Um, one packet of seed is, um, is more than enough um, for most families. Uh, so, yeah, love, do you want to do something with a cat, please? <laughs> We've got a cat that's that, that's crying in the background looking for his sister and it's a it's a little bit distracting cool so guys yes um th there may be a, a, a seed shortage coming i don't think it's going to happen um in the near future um will the price of seed go up probably yes uh, living seeds we most of our seed prices have not gone up um, there's only a couple of seed prices that have gone up um, we are trying very hard from our side not to increase our, our seed pricing. Um, so I don't want you to be concerned that living seeds will be price gouging seed. Um, it's not something that we would do, we'd ever intend to do. Um, and we are critically aware of how important living seeds is to, to people that are food gardening. Um, but I think we're going to see um, especially seed imports, we know seed imports um, that the freight costs have gone through the roof um, and naturally freight costs form part of, um, of our seed cost. So guys, okay, so Karen Lee, let me just answer a couple of questions over here. Let me see where my mouse is. Uh, let me just, there we go. Please excuse me over here. Okay, so Karen Lee asked, how long do seeds last for? Okay, and it varies on the seed. So if you're looking at um, parsnip seed, parsnip seed lasts anywhere between, anywhere between six months and one year. After a year, the seed basically is it's toast. Um, if you look at bean seeds, bean seeds will last between three and five years. If you look at tomato seeds, we have grown tomato seeds that are 30 years old. Um, we would we say that tomato seeds will last at least 10 years and um, what you can do is I will instruct the ladies that every single order that goes out from uh, from Monday will actually get um, our seed longevity pamphlet in it so that you guys can actually see we have a seed longevity pamphlet um, and and that pamphlet it tells you how long seeds last for so you don't need to store the seeds in a freezer. You don't need to um, have a, a seed vault like Svalbard. Um, all you need to do is keep the seed in a normal temperature environment. So as long as the seed is stuck in a cupboard in your house and um, it's, it, it's, it's generally a stable temperature, the seed will last. Um, we have... Um, big cool rooms we've got two big cool rooms on living seeds farm where we store our seed in um, and 
and the minute that you store seed in a cool room the seed lifespan expands um, what kills seed there's two things that kill seed the first thing is temperature fluctuations and the second thing is moisture so um, we will dry the seed out to the correct moisture content to ensure the best storage um, but what happens is when the temperature fluctuates on seed so if it goes from 5 degrees celsius to 20 degrees celsius down to 15 down to minus 10 back up to 40 degrees that is what kills seed so if you want to kill seed leave it in your hot car um, for two or three days and you're probably going to have dead seed um, but otherwise um, as long as you keep your seed in a, a generally temperature stable environment like your home um, you are going to see um, the recommended seed longevity on that pamphlet um, so yeah so we'll run through that and make sure that everybody that places an order gets the pamphlet what I'll look at doing is um, Nicola's making a, a, a note over here that I will actually put that onto Facebook I'll put something very similar onto Facebook for you guys cool so let me scroll up to the top over here back thanks yes Karen <laughs> thank you yes we are back um, it's a it, it's, it's beautiful living on a farm sometimes but when the signal sucks it sucks it sucks Diane listening from Midrand thank you can you mulch with pine needles Elsa I would not advise you mulching with pine needles um, I, I, it's a case of um, the uh, the amount of terpenes that are released into the soil from pine needles um, it's going to have an allopathic um, effect where if you look at a pine tree nothing grows under a pine tree the pine needles are going to do the exa exact same thing so no I wouldn't okay so next question over here love to see a live video on how to prepare the soil to start a veggie garden I am new to the group Ilza um, we are looking at doing a series of, of, of teaching videos um, and we will start working on those videos in the next week or two so um, the videos are coming 100% winter watering okay yeah, Colette, um, winter watering is it's it's relatively important so um, what you want to be doing is you want to be watering your vegetable garden um, and this goes against common um, intuitive advice but if you are, are trying to protect your plants from a heavy frost um, in the morning you want to water the garden in the late afternoon so what happens is uh, when water freezes water actually gives off heat it doesn't sound correct but that's exactly what happens the minute water freezes water gives off heat and it takes more energy to freeze um, water than it does to free it takes more energy to freeze wet soil than it does to freeze dry soil okay um, and I'm pretty sure that there's um, somebody that will be able to explain that exactly for us uh, so you want to be watering your plants quite late in the afternoon especially if you're experiencing heavy frost um, with your winter watering um, you do the exact same scientific method that you do for summer watering and that is take your finger and stick your finger in the soil if the soil is dry it needs water if the soil is damp it doesn't need water very scientific and it works cool um Sharon hello how's it um I'd like to see a live stream with Bill Kerr one of the writers okay so Bill is um my mentor he he's he's one of the reasons why Living Seeds is um so successful he he, he taught us a whole lot of things um and he lives down the road so um we'll see if we can have a chat to him hello Sean listening from Cape Town fantastic also new in the group guys fantastic if you guys are new in the group um, what I would highly recommend that you do is um, read through the topic posts on um, on living seeds veggie gardeners so if you're looking to learn something there's a whole lot of topics you if you click on a topic every single post that um, that forms part of that topic we try and tag it in there so you can actually just scroll through and just read a whole lot of information and that's one of the best ways to learn okay a video on vermiculture would be awesome <laughs> we can do that for you okay cool hazel 
I'd love you to cover container vegetable gardening in a very small garden. I'm replanting my boxes and it wasn't very successful last time. What is the correct soil mix for my boxes? I have mushroom compost and vermiculite. What else do I need? Okay, Hazel, what we can do is we can do that. Um, I will get Robert to um, build us a, a new container garden in our show garden. And I will try and have that done for you. Maybe we can do a container gardening um, live video next week. Just wait for the wind to die down. Um, we'll try and do a container gardening live video for you next week. Um, our container gardening or our raised bed gardening in, in the Living Seed Show Garden is looking awesome at the moment. And before the frost really, really hits, we'll try and get that done for you. Okay. Um, I'd like more on identifying pests and diseases and appropriate control measures. Okay. Janice, um, we have a book uh, or, or an e-book um, on... Um, on our website, that ebook um, is it's, it, it, it covers the most common pets and diseases. We update that ebook every single year, um, and we'll be updating it again. Um, well, we normally update it over winter, and um, <laughs> we're running our backsides off at the moment. So we'll see what we can do for you over there. Um, however, if you have a problem with a pest or a disease, um, please take a photograph, take a clear photograph, post it on Living Seeds Veggie Gardeners um, and somebody will respond to you um, and, and give you advice. Um, we normally try and delete the incorrect advice on the comments um, and just leave the correct advice so that, um, that that post sticks there with the correct advice. Cool. Okay. Um, Olivia, how would you prepare poor soil to plant for people that have never planted? Okay, Olivia, um, we would do it exactly the same way that I've just said now, where you put down, if you have poor soil, and I'm talking about if you have absolutely atrocious soil, where it is pure beach sand, um, or if it is, it's 100% hard clay that you can't sink, that you can't sink a pick, it, that you can't sink a pick into. What I would do is I'd take a couple of layers of cardboard, remove all of the plastic tape off the cardboard put the cardboard down on top of the soil from there if you are running pure, uh, with with pure beach sand or, or pure clay i would put down a nice thick layer of compost and on top of that i would put down a layer of straw as a mulch and plant directly into that and what's going to happen is um, the cardboard um, will will create an interface that no weeds can actually grow through um, the compost will start breaking down it'll give food to the seed or the seedlings that you're planting into into your new vegetable garden and the straw will be the mulch to protect um, and conserve moisture and um, that is literally the easiest way people have come to our, our show garden over here um, and we've done courses on starting a vegetable garden and that is the way we recommend people start a vegetable garden um, and we've literally taken cardboard, put it down on, on, on mown felt grass and planted directly into that and have, had a, and have had a great harvest. And the soil that is there after the, the first or second season is totally different to what you started with. Cool. Um, yes, please, for container gardening. We'll do a container gardening live stream next week, Friday, guys. Okay, clear. Hi Sean, do you know what would deter my chickens from eating my veggies plants? Certain plants they go crazy for. Okay, so <laughs> your chickens in a veggie garden are not a smart thing. Um, if you want chickens or some kind of, of bird in your vegetable garden, I would look at bantam chickens um, or what's called featherfoot chickens. So if you look at the silky bantams, their feet have got feathers on them. Um, so they don't actually scratch up the soil that much. Bantam chickens the very small bantam, like the, um, um, like, the Indi like the English game bantams and things like that, they don't do as much damage in your vegetable garden as um, full-size chickens will. We've got chickens over here. We don't want them in our vegetable garden. We've got a massive vegetable garden. What you can also do is look at getting some Indian runner ducks. Um, Indian runners are, are phenomenal. They don't uh, mess up the soil. Um, they don't eat your your seedlings for you um, and what they do is they actually wipe out all of the pests um, in your vegetable garden um, 
alternatively um, if you if you really want uh, free range chickens in your garden or, or on your property look at getting a chicken tractor that you can actually move around from place to place in your garden um, I know a lot of people um, actually make chicken tractors that work in their vegetable garden so if they've got a bare, a bare uh, um, vegetable bed what they do is they put the chicken tractor on that bare vegetable bed and they allow the chickens to actually work through the soil and they'll move that tractor down the vegetable garden as it's needed so that's one way of doing it so your chickens are still getting some movement but they're not destroying the plants that um, you are keen on keeping okay cool guys um, Sharon hi Sean can you import seeds from overseas what's the procedure legally okay Olivia yes you can import seed you can't import everything there are certain things that you're just not allowed to import um, so what you need to do is you need to um, apply to uh, the, the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries um, I know the name has changed I can't think of the new name right now but you apply to death for an import permit and there's two things that you require you need an authority to import a specific variety and you need an import permit so certain things don't need an import permit for example radish seed doesn't need an import permit you can just import radish seed but you still need an authority to import so there's two sides to the story um, and then you just need to know where to buy the seed from to ensure that the seed is clean seed it hasn't been treated etc but it's entirely possible to import seed living seeds does import seed we grow a lot of varieties on our farm but a lot of the stuff we do import as well cool okay guys so um let's see over here um sharon i bought your your artemis wormwood seeds how would i start growing here in winter in joburg winters is growing fast okay sharon uh, i'm not 100 percent sure how you'd like to grow it but what i would highly recommend is that you start the seeds off in jiffy plugs um, if, if you get some of the jiffy plugs you can for for the wormwood um, seedlings or wormwood seeds just get the smallest jiffy plugs put a couple of seeds inside there three or four seeds inside there um, and they'll be growing for you relatively easily it's a, it's a it's a very easy crop to grow or it's a very easy herb to grow let's put it that way okay um, hi Sean lovely to see you again <laughs> somewhere how's it my question is completely different. Please don't be angry. I'm more worried about the irrigation system. Do you sell the irrigation tape on its own? I have already bought two irrigation systems. Okay, cool. Yes, Samuel, if you, if you buy an irrigation system, the, uh, the base irrigation system comes um, with a complete unit, but you're able to buy the tape by itself um, and all of the connections by itself as well. So the most expensive part of the drip irrigation system is that punch. So if you've bought two of those punches, you only need one. So um, get hold of Eloise at our office. You can send that punch back to us and we'll actually refund you for that punch. Um, the punches are incredibly expensive. It's a, it's a stupid price. Um, and unfortunately, we, we've tried to find a cheaper way of doing it. Uh, but unfortunately, we, we're stuck with those punches. So please send the other punch back. Um, and have a chat to Eloise. Eloise will be able to show you um, or actually walk you through the steps of buying the tape by itself. The tape is sold in 10 meter lengths or in sections of 10 meter. We buy a roll of two and a half kilometers. Okay, and you can say I want a 300 meter or a 500 meter length and we'll do that for you. You can cut it up as you need it. Cool. Um, and Sam and I wouldn't be angry. It's a, it's a, it's a valid question. Okay, um, okay, Pathma, um, I'm glad we, I'm glad we, I'm glad we are inspiring you. We are based south of Joburg near Henry on Cliff. Um, currently, Living Seeds Farm is not open to the public. You are allowed to come and, and, and collect an order. Unfortunately, you can't walk around, you can't go into the show garden, um, but you are able to actually place an order online and then come and collect. Please don't um, arrive here expecting to walk into a shop. We don't have a shop. Okay. Um, okay. Ilse, where on the website do we find the ebook? And I see Emil has organized over there. Emil, thank you very much. You are awesome as always. Okay. Helia, I ordered your germination mix in the separate four packs. Quick question. 
once mixed and I don't need to use all of it, how do I store it? Okay, so um, literally in a bucket. It's, it's a case of it doesn't need to be stored in any special way. Um, the only thing is I would just um, make sure that you reduce the moisture content um, so that it doesn't, it doesn't start to go sour. Um, the only things that would go sour with, with too much water would be the coir, that little block portion, and the vermiculite. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not the vermiculite, the vermicast, the, the fertilis earthworm castings. Um, you don't want too much water inside there. If it's too much water, what's going to happen is the bacteria that's inside the vermicast is going to die. The minute the bacteria starts dying, what happens is the whole, your whole germination mix turns sour. But yes, absolutely, you can store it. Um, we store ours uh, behind our office under a big plastic tarp. You know, it's as simple as that. We will sort of wave some water at it once or twice a week. Okay, but absolutely fantastic. Um, Minky, can you grow Brussels sprouts in a greenhouse or does that need constant cold? Minky, if you want to grow Brussels sprouts properly, it needs a cold period. I would not be growing uh, um, Brussels sprouts. I actually wouldn't grow any of the brassicas um, in a greenhouse or inside a tunnel. Um, they really thrive on the cold um, and a lot of things like broccoli, if it, if it doesn't get a cold snap, um, it doesn't form nice heads. Uh, same with cauliflower as well, it's looking for a nice cold snap. Cool guys, we are now exactly at 11 o'clock and um, I am being told that we need to go. <laughs> guys, it's been awesome. Um, I'm going to be running around today. Um, if there are any additional questions, just leave them down in the comments below. Um, I'm going to try and take these two videos and combine both videos and upload it to Facebook. So it actually is one single video. Um, hopefully that'll work. Um, and if I can get that right, you'll be able to look at this video on, on, on YouTube in, in one relatively cohesive length. Guys, thank you very much. I always appreciate you guys coming to listen. Um, and yeah, have a great day um, and enjoy your gardens. Really enjoy your gardens. Thank you very much.